Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS joins efforts to fight charity fraud during International Recognition Week. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, IRS. I mean, did you see that Candace Owens documentary on the Black Lives Matter not-for-profit organization? So, the administrators seem to have inexplicably become real estate moguls. Plus, they seem to be funding some kind of transgender mafia or something over there, I swear. And I, I mean, transgenderism doesn't have anything to do with Black Lives Mattering, it seems to me. You know what I mean, IRS? Like, transgenderism often seems more like a desperate content creator thing. Creators attempting to be part of the intersectional hierarchy, so the algorithm might give them a, like a YouTube view or two. J just kidding, just kidding YouTube. That was totally just a joke. We all know your algorithm is totally like fair as a square with unequal sides, which isn't technically a square, but whatever, it's just a joke. Here's another one. Sorry, it's kind of a long joke Monday here. Dear God, Scooby-Doo, what did they do to you? Apparently they couldn't teach an old dog new woke tricks. It's blinking. Our family's lawyer blinds her. So the dog had to go. And the new Scooby-Doo show. Do you need any calls? No. Any messages? No. Any customers? No, Dr. Venkman. Type something, will you? We're paying for this stuff. Well, I guess actually it's the Velma spinoff. So at least they kept something. But still. And? <laughs> Still standing. Okay, I'm I mean, this looks like another IP not handled well. Oops. Right. And I personally think it's because a dog is a man's best friend. What has that got to do with it? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. And apparently, according to just about every mainstream writer these days, men suck. I look out there at all of you wonderful guys and I say to myself, what I wouldn't give to be 20 years younger and a woman. So once again, the dog had to go. He hoped and he popped and he signed an eviction notice. I mean, honestly, I bet they wanted to castrate poor Scooby like he was some poor helpless five-year-old in the public school system. And Raven's egg, blood of a hen, a little bit more blood, yes. Testicles of a newt. I guess he's a transsexual now. <laughs> And Scooby just wasn't having it. The writers are like, well, Scooby, if you won't allow us to castrate you, we'll just change the focus to Velma. They've taken the castle. I thought it felt a bit drafty. And Scooby's like, well, that's fine. You just do that. This never would have happened if your father was alive. He's dead? Yes. And my mother? She died of pneumonia while... Oh, you were away. And we'll see how popular it is. My brothers? They were all killed by the plague. My dog Pongo? Run over by a carriage. It, it's, it's not going well, is it? My goldfish Goldie? Eaten by the cat. My cat? Choked on the goldfish. I don't know, but whose idea was it to write this show? Latrines? Such an unusual name, Latrine. You mean you changed it to Latrine? Yeah, used to be shit house. It's a good change. We have a story to tell. Please lend us your ears. That's disgusting. I mean, honestly, I don't think the writers are going to be able to land this one. You know, I've personally flown over 194 missions and I was shot down every one. <laughs> Come to think of it, I've never landed a plane in my life. But, disclaimer, I've never actually seen the show, so this is just a random, meaningless rant. IR 2022-180, October 17, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service announced its continued support by joining international efforts to fight fraud during Charity Fraud Awareness Week, October 17 through the 21st. The IRS partners in this effort as part of its ongoing commitment to fight fraud against charities, businesses, and individuals. 
Sounds good, IRS. I still think you should widen the political scope a bit in terms of the organizations you go after, but that's just, that's just my opinion. It's estimated that charitable organizations will lose 5% of their revenue each year to fraud, according to the Fraud Advisory Panel, a UK-based organization leading the effort by organizing this week of awareness. And I would think those types of not-for-profit organizations that are run by people actually committing fraud are likely to be losing more than 5% even in their particular amounts to fraud. But in any case, experts say cybercrime is on the rise, including attacks on charities, their supporters, and beneficiaries. And this, of course, would make sense because we're kind of in an environment more ripe for fraud when there's a lot of uh, changes with regards to the law and people are uncertain they're changing jobs and so on and so forth and of course we have the changing and ever-changing technology and the social media platforms and whatnot so you would expect there's going to be new and changing environments for the fraudsters out there so charities regulators agencies law enforcement and other not-for-profit uh, stakeholders around the world are working together to raise awareness about fraud and cyber crime that affects charities. These efforts resulted in seven days when supporters actively discuss fraud, share best practices, and often, often helpful resources. Seven days of discussion. Woohoo! The, <laughs> the problem, I have no doubt, has been solved. Here we go. What did you come up with? How to verify a charity. Quote, We'd like to thank the Fraud Advisory Panel for reminding donors to remain vigilant, end quote, said IRS Director of Exempt Organizations and Government Entities, Rob Malone. So clearly, first thing that came out of that intense brainstorming, you need to, you need, you need to be vigilant out there, guys. You need to be vigilant, okay? So, quote, Unfortunately, natural disasters like Hurricane Ian provide an opportunity for charity scammers to take advantage of genuine efforts to help. I urge donors to verify a charity's tax-exempt status as tax-exempt organization search. There's a link to that here before donating goods, services, or money, end quote. So clearly, one of the things we want to be aware of is that we want to see that the charity is actual and not-for-profit organization. And note, the first step would be normally to check that they're a not-for-profit organization. And you would think that fraudulent charities will also often put pressure on you, social pressure, uh, in order to, to get you to give them money in a particular situation without basically double-checking uh, too, too intensely. So they might, you know, try to get to ask you for money in public or say there's a time frame, they need it here and now. Or, or something like that. But oftentimes it would be nice if you're gonna to give to charity to actually say, no, I'm gonna actually do my research and I would like my money to go somewhere that's a legitimate charity. And notice if it is a legitimate charity, that just means that they filed for not-for-profit status and they're a charity in terms of, of the tax code. That doesn't mean they're actually run well because charities actually have a more difficulty running efficiently than for-profit organizations. Because if you give money to for-profit organizations, you're buying their stock, for example, then you're checking checking up on them. You're giving them pressure because you expect a return. Not-for-profit organizations don't have that. You give money to a not-for-profit organization, and you don't check up. You don't really follow up. You just say, "I did my good deed for the day," and you go on your way. But so so there's not the same kind of pressure. So what you would like to do is even go a step further and look into those organizations that are not just not-for-profit organizations in terms of the tax code so that you get a write-off on it, but they actually spend the money well. They have a track record of being able to overcome the added adversity of being a not-for-profit organization with naturally leads to bloat, inefficiently run organizations. So that's any case. Fake charities. In addition to cybercrime targeting charities, criminals who create fake charities are also a problem. Fake charities are part of the IRS's Dirty Dozen Tax Scams for 2022. There's a link to the Dirty Dozen Tax Scams here. As noted above, taxpayers should verify legitimate and qualified charities using the tax-exempt organization search tool on irs.gov. Now, if they're trying to get you to give money to a fake charity, then of course you can do research on, on the charity to check them out. And again, I would be wary of anybody that's trying to pressure you to give money publicly or to give money, you know, and, and have a time constraint or, or put like social pressure on you to give you money immediately. That's the sign of a scam is usually 
that that they have something that you have to act now you've got to do it now and then they have a threat which is the threat in this case is if you don't act now there's social pressure and you'll lose you know whatever in front of people but no you're going to say no i'm going to research the charity see that you're actually legitimate and then possibly i'll give it to you and i'm not you know gonna gonna worry about anything else except having my money go to somewhere where it might do some actual good okay so donors should never feel pressured to give immediately links to more information a special website was created for charity fraud awareness week there's a link to that here and features information to help mark partners charities and other tax exempt organizations and not for profit find details about awareness week you can uh, find free resources a fraud pledge for organizations a listing of webinars and other events those encouraged to participate in this week's activities include trustees staff and volunteers from charities non-government organizations and non-profits organizations that represent the interest of non uh, non-profits accountants auditors and those acting as professional advisors to nonprofits, regulators, law enforcement officials, and policymakers working to safeguard nonprofits. So visit the Fraud Advisory Panel. There's a link to that here. Website to learn more about Charity Fraud Awareness Week and how to get involved. So you can check out you can check out those links, and there'll be a link to this in the description.